right, you guys, here we go. Brace yourselves, this is a long one. So I got my Revel Nail Clean Slate, which is their newly released peel base in, and I wanted to go ahead and use it so I could report back to you guys on how it was for me. So first of all, it looks very similar to the UNT peel base. It's, um, you know, similar color, similar consistency. Um, so I kind of expected a similar experience. So first of all, it applied fine. Um, it dried really quickly. Now, that being said, I didn't like look super closely at it because I don't really pay too much attention to my peel base. I apply one layer, let it dry, and then go in with my dip base. Um, since this experience that I had, um, Carolinette over at Toby Nails on Instagram, she, um, she posted in her Insta stories, like a pretty good look at the peel base dried on her nails and, um, it was kind of patchy. And so that was interesting. Sorry, I just got cut off by a phone call. So this is like a weird voice segment for you guys, but my husband was on a SWAT call out and I was waiting to hear from him. So I didn't want to put my phone on do not disturb. And of course, as luck would have it, he called in the middle of my sentence. So back to it. The patchy application that Carol noticed may explain some of the experience I had. So it dried down really quickly and I was like, great, let's get into it. So I started dipping. Um, dipping was fine. I'll talk about that in just a second, but I will say I had a struggle with three out of the five nails getting them to pop off. So two of them kind of loosened up and popped off like I would normally experience after maybe two to three days, but um, three of them, I had to work my butt off to get that dip powder off my nails. And I was really worried I was going to be lifting my builder gel. I had to like really file around the edges and work at it. So it kind of made sense to me that if the application was kind of patchy, then that could be why. Um, so I think if I get brave enough to give it a try again, I'll probably do two coats of the peel base. So the other thing I experienced, um, which I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell here because this is like a nude color, but my first layer of dip was a little bit patchy. So around the side walls of my nails, there wasn't like good, see how it's kind of not full coverage there. Um, so that tells me that the dip base was drying fast when I applied it on top of the peel base. So I had that experience happen before um, the first time I used Manny Boss. And so I think that that tells me that even though it felt dry to the touch, it may need more dry time if I don't want that to happen. So if you're impatient like I am and you still wanna use the product, um, what I would recommend is applying a layer of, of your dip base, just dip base, don't dip into your powder, just apply a full layer of your dip base over your peel base and then go in with your dipping process. So that allows your first layer of dip base to just like dry rapidly like it's wanting to do on top of the peel base anyway, but then not affect the dip powder adherence. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or shoot me um, like a DM on Instagram. I'm happy to kind of discuss my experience further. This is the only time I've used the peel base so far from Revel, so I don't have like more feedback than what I'm giving you, um, but I do plan to give it a try again and probably, like I said, do two coats of the peel base and see if that was what was happening is that like it applied kind of patchy and so two coats maybe would cover the patchy areas. Um, so anyway, the dip powder I am using right now is a Sparkle & Co. Um, sub bag color from last like winter. I feel like maybe January. I don't know um, But it's called the award glows too and it's this really great nude and it glows white in the dark So of course I loved it Because um, I love all glows. I'm not usually like somebody who's attracted to nude colors I just I don't know if I never thought like I could rock them with my skin tone But in the summer with a bit of a tan, I feel like they look it looks good. I like it. Um, so I went ahead and did a third dip 
Um, I think this is my third dip. I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing on screen. I think this is my third dip. And that was because the first dip was kind of a patchy application. So I wanted to make sure I got full coverage. And I'm using my Virgo and Gem um, dip base, which you've heard me say before, is really nice and thin. So I don't ever hesitate if I need to add an extra um, dip of powder because it's just gonna be nice and thin when I'm using my Virgo and Gem or Triple D or Manny Boss liquids. They're just really nice, thin application and I can always count on that. So now that I've got those layers down, I'm going to cap in clear and then get on to my um, other color for this Manny, which believe it or not, Revel Flamingo, I did not own. I've seen it so many times and I thought like, oh, that's gorgeous and I just had to have it. So when I placed the order for that, um, the peel base, I was like, yep, finally gonna get my hands on Flamingo. And I was so, so glad I did. You guys, if you don't have this color, it's a must have. So if you follow Sparkle & Co at all, you may have seen they have a secret um, menu color called Watermelon Sizzle, and it's like a hot pink with flakes in it. And then they recently had a sub bag color that was like an I want it all color, and it was a vibrant orange with flakes in it. I have both of those also, but Flamingo was the winner for me. So Flamingo is leaning orange, but it's like a, like a coral leaning orange. And it was just like the perfect color for me. I, I love it so, so much. I know it kind of looks pink right there, um, but hopefully you can tell a little bit more in pictures and like once it's applied on my nail that it is, it is much more corally orange and I loved it. I want to do a full mani of this. It's like just the perfect bright summer color. So if you don't have it, make sure you get your hands on that. So I went ahead and with my first dip, I kind of had the same experience. It's harder to tell, I think with this color because of the flakes, but, um, it did have the patchiness around the edges. So I do three dips in the Flamingo also, I believe, and then clear cap it. So in the end, it turned out just gorgeous. And like I said, it was a favorite for me. This Manny I had had in mind since the beginning of summer and was so excited to do it. Um, I'm sorry, cause this is such a long video, but I was really wanting to include a lot of the things people have been asking for. I wanted to talk about the peel base. I'm including my filing process later in this. Um, I will do my best to remember to put timestamps down below and what that does is it will allow you to skip if you don't want to watch like the filing or whatever the case may be or if you just don't want to listen to me talk you can skip to what you want to see. Um, speaking of talking and listening to me talk, I've had a few random comments over the past couple months about people having problem hearing me. Some people flat out saying I turned up my volume all the way and can't hear you. But the rest of you, from what I understand, can hear me just fine. So will you guys do me a favor, and maybe I'm asking for trouble here, but will you give this video a thumbs up if you can hear me just fine? Um, and then a thumbs down if you can't hear me at all. And if it's somewhere in between and you're like, you know, I can hear you, but it would be good to increase the volume a little bit, let me know because I can adjust that in my, um, my upload. And of course, I, I don't want to be yelling at you guys, so I hesitate to raise my voice, um, but I can turn the volume up a little bit on the audio recording if that would be helpful. So just give me some feedback on that. Don't like, you know, I don't want a hundred th thumbs downs on this. That might break my heart. But um, do let me know if you're having problems with that or if there's anything I can do to improve the audio quality for you guys. Um, so that being said, I'm going to go ahead and finish my application of Flamingo and then you're going to see me get into my filing and buffing. So I will pop back and talk about filing and buffing or filing and e-filing for me anyway, um, a little bit while I'm in that process. And then we'll get on to some water slide decal application. So hang in there for a minute and I'll be right back.
All right, so here is my Melody Susie dust collector. If you need a dust collector, this one does a great job um, on my desk, keeps that dust off of my desk surface. Uh, I love it. I kind of wish I could dip on top of it. I probably could dip on top of it, but I don't know, that could be complicated. But yeah, it would do a great job of collecting all of like my glitters and flakes and dust and all that stuff. So I am going to hand file my shape. I haven't filed on camera for a little bit, obviously you guys know that. So it took me a minute to like kind find my comfortable spot to, and try to like stay in frame and show you guys. I don't know how you guys are, but if I'm not on camera filing, my hand is pretty darn close like up to my face. I'm not blind or anything, but it's just like how I can see and angle things the best. Um, so sometime you should you should consider like try filing in like a couple inch radius <laughs> to stay in like a camera frame and you'll understand why this is something I don't do super often. <laughs> um, I do have a video a, a little while back of just my filing process. Is it just? Yeah, I think it is. I didn't even dip on camera. I just did my filing. So I'll drop that link down in the description box for you guys as well if you want to just see that. Um, but this is basically the same thing. I flatten out my free edge. I taper in the side. So basically where your nail starts is detached from your finger. That's where you want to start tapering it in if you want like the um, like coffin or what I would call a tapered square is what I wear. So you don't want to file in lower than where your, where your nail attaches to your skin because you're going to end up with like ingrown nails on the side or like just kind of all kinds of cuticle issues so make sure that you you just start where your finger ends and then the nail is detached and that's going to be your free edge on the side and then on the flat top part um, and then i like to take my hand file right around my cuticle area if you have sensitive skin sensitive cuticles and you find you're tearing them up a lot first of all if you have a new file make sure you season that file so to season a file you want to take an old file and run it along the edge of the new file and that's just going to take the sharp edge off of that so you're not cutting up your skin as much um, another solution is the um, bonafide beauty ergo file they're available on amazon you can find them in the store my amazon storefront linked down in the description box there are a couple of them and those are a glass file so the edge that's you know going around the dip powder is the file side but the other part of it is just like smooth glass so you're not going to cut up your cuticles so i highly recommend if you have like more sensitive cuticles and you you want that like clean cuticle line but you can't seem to get it because you're not wanting to cut up your fingers um, i highly recommend trying out one of those um, glass files or like a thin metal file i always describe it as like the file that was in your mom's purse if you are someone who grew up in like the 80s and 90s because that's when i grew up and my mom totally had one of those like brown plastic handled like thin metal files in her purse at all times. And I was always like, why do you have that? Um, but they're great for getting in that little crevice around the edge of the, um, the dip powder. So along your cuticle line, they just fit right in there and will clean everything up nicely. So now I've got my e-file out. The e-file I have out today is my um, triple D e-file. I love this e-file. If you need a good quality e-file, check them out. I don't believe they're in stock right now, but I believe they will be coming back in stock next weekend. I will try to confirm that and put that in the description box for you as well. Um, it's a great e-file and then I'm just using a diamond barrel bit. So I'm paying extra attention to this nail because I did do three dips plus a clear dip and because I'm going to apply a water slide on top of it I wanted it to be nice and smooth. Um, I have my e-file probably at about 8 to 10 uh, thousand rpms. That is a nice comfortable speed for me. If you're just starting out start nice and slow like it's not going to hurt anything to go slowly. You're just going to be slow and cautious and diamond bits are great for beginners because they're not going to rip up your skin either. They're very gentle. So I like to go down the sidewall. I like to do what you just saw to thin out that transition from the dip powder down to my natural nail. That's going to help prevent lifting 
interesting as well if you're worried about that because the smoother the transition is from the dip powder to your natural nail the less you're going to like snag that transition on things you know when they when you have your your dip powder grow out and it starts to lift and all of a sudden it's getting snagged when you run your hands through your hair yeah smoothing out that transition is going to help a lot and so then again i like to go up the other side and just again smooth that transition that gives you the apex where you want it you want to have like the height of the dip powder in the middle of your nail and then smoothly transition down on the sides and towards the cuticle so i hope that makes sense and i hope like i didn't confuse y'all by talking while i was doing it but um anyway i'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch me e-file i do the same thing through all of my nails i don't know whether it'll be easier to tell what i'm doing when i'm on like the flamingo nails because they're colored or not um, but hang in there hopefully you this helps you if you're somebody who's been wanting me to include the filing process and i will be back to talk through water slide decal application in just a minute
Okay, so after I file my nails and shape them, I went ahead and washed my hands, but now what I like to use is another glass file tool. So this is another Bonafide Beauty glass cuticle pusher, and it's also in my Amazon storefront below. And this is what I really like to go around and just clean up any extra product that's around the cuticle edge or sidewalls of my nails. And this does a really great job of just getting you that really clean, crisp line um, even like after I've filed and everything like you can see there's still just kind of product residue that that is there um, and this really gets into that area and um, gets all that extra stuff out um, and smooths it out for me so I highly recommend this one it's also great if you're prepping your cuticles or your nails for application so if you apply a cuticle softener to your natural nail um, the other end of this cuticle pusher is great for getting that like invisible cuticle off your nail so i have boss babe which is a cheetah print from poshy nail designs that is what i'm going to go with for my accent nails today um, so you want to cut out the shape of the water slide decal that you're applying and put it in a little bit of water and that's what you're seeing up there on the right hand part of the screen i'm just cleaning off any dust off of the top of my dip powder since i had washed my hands but then i went ahead with that the glass cuticle pusher so I just want to wait make sure there's no like specks of anything on my nail surface and then I am gonna go in with gel base now you have options here if you don't want to use gel you can use a sticky polish which is um, I have a maniology sticky polish which is it's just a nail polish so it'll dry air dry um, and have a tacky finish so that's an option for you you can also do um, like a bonding agent so you could try Mia secret extra bond or triple d ultra bond or young nails protein bond because those will also give you a tacky surface and you can do it without the tacky surface i've seen some people apply sorry you guys i switched it up and decided to do my ring finger first um, i've seen some people apply water slide decals on top of gel top coat i think it's um Kate over at Kate's Nails that I've seen do this where she applies gel top coat and cures it like totally cures it glossy and then applies her water slide on top um, but this is my preferred method so I went ahead and applied the gel base I cured it for 30 seconds and this is my jelly stamper that I use for stamping and it's nice and clear um, except mine is all scuffed up and scratched, so ignore that. But if you have a clear jelly stamper, it's the way to go. And then you just go ahead and smush it onto your nail right where you want it. And it applies so nicely with this method. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a um, makeup sponge, again, back from like the 80s and 90s. I don't know, maybe people still use these, but I don't. Um, just a makeup sponge. I like to dab mine in water because I find that it gives that... Uh, water slide just a little bit more moisture and it smushes down just perfectly for me when I do it this way so after I've got it like smushed down how I want it I am going to take a little brush and get a little bit of acetone on that brush and then I'm going to dab around the edge of that water slide decal so that just quite instantly melts away the excess of the water slide and um, so you don't have to worry about cleaning up around the tip or cutting anything off. So I'm going to finish up on this water slide application, get into my gel base and top coat to finish this up, and then we'll be back to wrap this up. Thanks for bearing with me as long as you have.
All right, so I went ahead and cured my base for 30 seconds and now I'm going in with my gel top coat. If you're new here, then boy, did you pick a doozy to start watching my channel because this is about twice the length that I usually upload on this channel. Um, but if you're new here, then you're wondering why I'm doing gel base and then gel top coat, but I find that that keeps my gel top coat from chipping or peeling off of my dip powder application. So that is my preferred method for if I'm finishing off a mani with um, gel top coat. If you are a dip the dip liquid user only um, and you have out gel allergies or something you could encapsulate those um, poshy waterside decals by doing a clear dip powder dip on top of them then activating that clear dip powder and finishing off with your dip top coat so that is an option for you if you are not a gel user so keep that in mind um, you have options as well so now we're going to go ahead and cure that top coat for 60 seconds and we're done so I'm going to put on my cuticle oil to hydrate my cuticles and keep that skin healthy as I always finish out a mani this way. So what do you guys think of this look? Again, it was one I really loved. I wanted to do it for a while and I loved it as much as I thought I was going to. So I hope you guys did too. Make sure you check out the description box for a candy skincare discount code if you need one. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, give me your feedback on the volume of my voice or I don't know, the music, if that needs to be turned down, and let me know what your thoughts are. So I'm gonna pop this into my lamp and show you guys the glow. There it is. All right, I'll catch you guys in my next vid. Bye now.